When I was a teenager, kids my age wanted to become pop stars or go to Hollywood. But today, many creative teens dream of making it in the world of gaming. Some game designers have enjoyed huge overnight success and their products are enjoyed by millions of people around the world. But what is it that makes games so fascinating? And what makes a game a real hit? Today on SHIP. In 2018, the global gaming industry generated sales of 40 billion euros, a new record. And Pokemon Go, which is one of the best-known smartphone games around, has made the developers 1.8 billion euros so far. Games have become a global cultural phenomenon. More than 200 million people play Fortnite. Even I have tried out some of the game's cult victory dances, even though survival games aren't really my thing. Actually, my 13-year-old nephew said my dancing was utterly embarrassing. But maybe that's exactly what makes games so popular today. Their ability to make such a big impact on mainstream culture. You might be familiar with these dance moves. They're part of the global Fortnite community. The survival game's Battle Royale mode is hugely popular, and so are the player's unique outfits and dances. Some of them were inspired by movies, music videos, and even ordinary people. Orange Shirt Kid, one of YouTube's ingenious dance inventors, even sued the game developer for plagiarizing his moves. Fortnite has made dancing one of its trademarks, and the internet is now full of tutorials on how to bust a move like your favorite Fortnite character. In February, there was even a Fortnite in-game concert by DJ Marshmallow, the first of its kind in the world. And Fortnite also set a new record on the Twitch live streaming video platform. Last year, 628,000 people watched a Fortnite stream by pro gamer Tyler Ninja Blevins. Part of the reason for this success is co gamers NFL star Juju Smith Schuster, rapper Travis Scott, and pop star Drake. Games have the power to unite people from all areas of society. Some games evolve into much more than that. Pokemon started as a game in 1996, and the little pocket-sized monsters became global icons, as well as movie stars, cute, colorful, and totally irresistible. The intuitive game design also helped to make Pokemon a hit with people of all ages around the world. It soon became a part of our entertainment culture. And it's just a matter of time before the first Fortnite-themed amusement parks open and Fortnite movies hit the big screen. There are already fake, fan-made trailers online. But lesser-known games can be lucrative too. In 2016, German student Daniel Stammler started a small gaming company called Fluffy Fairy Games with some fans. The company grew and they later renamed it Colibri Games. Today, they make almost 40 million a year and employ some 100 full-time staff members. The company's games, Idle Miner Tycoon and Idle Factory Tycoon, have been downloaded more than 65 million times. And Colibri Games pulled off this success without the help of investors. No investor would have given us money anyway. We were a startup based in a shared student apartment, and we'd never developed a game before. Though they had no history in game design, Dania and his friends one day started to work on one at home. It probably helped that they had two IT and two engineering students in the team. They invested lots of their free time and eventually released Idle Miner Tycoon. Idle games are all about players carrying out simple tasks. In Idle Miner Tycoon, gamers need to dig up and sell natural resources. You can get hooked on these kinds of games, even though people only tend to spend short periods playing them. They're a big hit for smartphones. Colibri Games has now released a second game, Idle Factory Tycoon. It's also free to download. The company earns money through in-game ads and purchases. 
their focus get back the focus the isn't on selling games. Now the players download them, and companies have to keep them happy for months or years. There are special events for the live ops, for example, at Halloween or Christmas. There's something new for the player every weekend. Games are constantly undergoing development and changing. Live ops give developers feedback about games, so they no longer have to earmark such huge sums of money for the development stage. They keep tweaking the game when it's already out. This model requires flexibility, but can be a huge advantage. You need to get the game out quickly to see how players interact with it, what they like and dislike, instead of working for half a year with no feedback. Colibri Games has only two games so far. They've got plenty of ideas, but are focused on keeping the 11 million active players of Idle Miner and Factory Tycoon happy. Colibri Games have embraced one of the industry's new trends, live ops. That means releasing games as early as possible and using player feedback to constantly improve the product. Gaming platform Steam even has a special early access area. Players can try out games in their very early stages, though there is no guarantee they will catch on and become the next big thing. Some gaming ideas do quickly evolve into mega projects and can no longer be managed by a small group of friends, in which case there are several ways of getting much needed capital. Many indie game developers rely on crowdfunding to get their projects rolling. Though Kickstarter says only 30% of investors stumble upon good ideas by chance, most find out about new gaming projects through advertising or reports. That means developers need to proactively build a community. And the very start isn't always the best time for crowdfunding. I would recommend you should be at least 50% of the way there. Um, you need to have a sizable community. Um, you need to have gameplay. Um, and you, I, we also recommend having at least your first three updates planned before you launch your campaign. Pitching your new game to investors can be a way of securing money early on. There are even special investment funds for the gaming industry. London Venture Partners is one of the biggest. It's currently involved with 20 game companies. We are an early stage investor, so a lot of the investments we do are based on maybe two guys with an idea and a pitch. They haven't registered a company yet, so really, really, really early. Investors tend to be more focused on the market potential of developers and their product than on the content of the game itself. We don't invest in games per se. Uh, we want to see that the plan you have has ambition to become a leader in that field, that you will own that category, that you will know more and be better able to service customers in that uh, segment on that model that you've identified than anyone else. Those are kind of the key pieces for us to get excited um, and to invest. Getting an investor to spot your idea in the crowd can be tricky. Let's be honest, many games are very similar. In late 2018, there were almost 300,000 gaming apps available on Google Play. But despite the choice, I only ended up with 61 games on my smartphone. What's important is to have a catchy idea. Like this, Pigeon Pop. Just a silly game with funny graphics, but one of my favorites at the moment. Most developers target what's believed to be the typical gamer. White Western males aged 15 to 35 though some companies are slowly looking for new target audiences as well. Finding a niche can be a recipe for success. Shaka Zulu, Mansa Musa and Anansi are heroes from African folklore. And they're also characters in Africa's Legends, a game developed by Ghanaian company Letty Arts. It was especially targeted towards young African players. They wanted to give young people a more diverse vision of what a superhero looks like. This is very necessary to change the mindset of the younger generations to come. We need to start seeing superheroes doing cool stuff with our color. Fantasy is very powerful. It can change people's mindset and give people hope. The game is designed to make African culture known worldwide. 
German game makers Wurger, meanwhile, target female players aged 45 years and over. June's Journey and Pearl's Peril are some of their biggest titles. They're all about finding hidden objects. They have cool graphics and a storyline that progresses week by week. The gaming industry still has a lot of white men. At Wuga, we try to hire a range of people. Our workforce is a third female and from 40 different countries. Hamburg-based startup Retrobrain is also tapping into new target audiences. They create video games that can be played without a joystick or a controller. Instead, players use gestures to control the game, which is thought to stimulate the brain. Combining motoric, neurophysiological and cognitive challenges and memories, that's what we're trying to achieve. That's optimal for therapy and prevention. And so it seems that keeping physically and mentally fit through gaming has proven not only to be great fun, but also to be a successful business niche. So what is it that makes a game a success? It definitely helps if developers create a kind of community, for example, with early access and live ops. Though a real gaming hit is one that manages to take the leap from the virtual world to the real world, where everyone's talking about it and they know the characters, moves and faces, when even people who don't play it know all about it. So what do you make of the rise of gaming? What are your insider gaming tips? Let us know on Facebook on DW.com and on YouTube, where we have some sound scientific facts about why gaming is good for you. Check it out. That's it for this week. See you next time. Bye.